Hi guys, it's Rob from Royal Bowls. As you can see behind me here, things are looking a little bare. I just wanted to give you guys an update before we leave for Korea. The packers are coming on Monday and the computer is being packed up and shipped away. And so this is my last chance to make a video. So in this update video, we've got a little bit about snakes. And this is very familiar behaviour. This is the Pastel Highway Clown at ARP during a cleaning session examining the tub next door. And you'll notice the long tongue flicks for the area search and then the very detailed search when the tongue flicks are much shorter and quicker. We've seen this before during free roaming of my snakes. Scent is undoubtedly one of the most important senses for a snake and it's how it builds up a picture of its world rather than listening and seeing things as we do. Here you can see that very detailed examination on the edge of the tub as it picks up some scent that is of particular interest. Very systematic, very meticulous and not at all random. This is my hatchlings on feeding day and I've always said that scent, heat signature and movement are the three triggers that you need to get your snakes to eat and of those scent is the most important. Let's have a look at what I mean by that when I bring rats into the room and see how the snakes respond to that. This is what the snake room looks like two minutes after bringing live rats into the room. Normally the snakes will be fast asleep and inactive. This is what I mean by them getting switched on and ready to eat. Just the stimulus of the scent in the room is enough to get these snakes hot to trot and ready to eat. And you can see that they're all doing it. And of course I'm continuing my enduro training and here is the start of my double blip training. This requires throttle and clutch control and there is actually a double blip of the throttle to avoid nose diving off the end of the hazard. It's quite technical and a little bit difficult in terms of coordination but we're getting there. And this next one is what we call the wall. It's actually a six foot, almost vertical step. And this requires full commitment. You cannot test the water by having a half-hearted go at it. You need to commit. The consequences of failure on this hazard are quite severe. This last clip gives you a good idea of just how steep this rock is. We've been to Oman, and for those of you that are interested in fishing, I've got some footage there. We captured some spectacular footage, caught some spectacular fish, and I've even got some drone footage. So this is one of the big mosques in Muscat, and yes, they do allow visitors inside. It is spectacular. And moving on from Muscat, we moved down to the south coast to Salala, and this was to be our home for the next week. This is a mothership operation, and we sailed from Salala a hundred miles to the Helaniat Islands, which are pretty remote and almost uninhabited. The scenery and the fishing was spectacular.
Catching up with old fishing friends is one of the best parts of these fishing holidays. Now, as you can hear, it was actually quite windy throughout the trip and some of the small boat fishing was quite choppy. Tain, Tain, find you. You can go. What's that, mate? Have you shown it? Come up. Have I shown it? No. Have you shown it? Towards you, the top, the top of him, yeah, that's good. Put his head. We don't mind it doing that though, it's going the right way. My forearm, see? <laughs> you got a laugh to do in dress. Fuck that fish. 18 meters. Yeah, it's on the pink. I had a fair bit of action yeah, that pink. Yeah, stick we'll bait had quite a few so bullets. Yeah. Might be bigger than I thought it was. Ten? It might be twelve, I reckon. Not even fourteen. <laughs> Eight meters. Nine eight meters. Ah, this is a big fish. This is what we came here for, Scotty. Back to one in and out of it. Reverse. Here he is, I've got a colour. Yep. Well done mate, well done. 
Yep, he's seen the boat. Dan Scotty, this is your 50 mate. He's right here, he's, he's right here now, there's the lead or not. Well, it's hard, so hard to foul hook. It ain't 50. Oh no, that's bigger than that. Much bigger than that. Well, in the 30s. Right, Rob, can you come and do this? Can you come and take this? I'm, I'm still filming. Yeah. There you go. Back. There you go. Right. That's got to be 50, hasn't it? That's 50, yeah. That's my PB. For sure. Oh, 
12, I reckon. It's gonna break your calf. 45. 45. 45. Good fish. Good fish, but not my PB. When we came back from Old Man, the missus was straight off to China for a site visit, and a week after that, off to Korea. And I've been here on my own for the last several weeks, working to get stuff ready for us to move to Korea. So, how is the packing going? All the snakes are moving out here, and I've struggled a little bit with some of these snakes, getting them out and off to ARP. A lot of stuff to move here, not just snakes, but racks as well. And the logistics of the exercise have been quite difficult. We've had to do it in phases to get all the snakes those few kilometers down to ARP constrictors. Everything has to go out of that narrow doorway and here are the hatchlings. The hatchlings were moving first and they're all organized with their clutch and breeding records. And Samantha, your snakes are now with ARP and ready to send whenever you're ready. How is the rest of the packing going? As I say, the packers are coming on Monday and so I've been up to my eyeballs in stuff. This is mostly hobby stuff actually. Here we've got a ton of fishing gear and my modelling gear. I want to take all of these with me to Korea so that I can spend my spare time productively. Alright guys, the moment of truth. This is the biggest rack that I have in the room. It's now empty. I've taken all the tubs out. And the challenge is getting it through that door. It did come in through that door. Therefore, it must be able to go out. So let's get it out. Well, that was a bit of a struggle, guys. I had to shove the GTP rack over. But um, laying on its side, this is now out the door fantastic and here we go guys it's out and it's back in its upright position i'm sweating buckets here but that's a job done only a couple more racks to go out of the snake room and we should be done so before this one goes let me just give you a another look at my gtp enclosure at this gtp here is big. But the enclosure is also very big. I love this enclosure. What a shame. And over here is my massive mangrove cat snake Boiga. This is huge. This thing is about eight feet long. And that whole enclosure there is going to be going to ARP. So now we just have these two racks here with snakes in. This smoke rack here, these snakes will be transported across to ARP to go in that rack that you just saw being taken out of the room. And then we've got these two grow on racks as well. So that's pretty much it guys, another couple of trips to ARP should see this done. And Pepper, the fat cat, was in no mood to help. And yes, I am doing this single-handed. Here is the missus in Oman, and here is the missus in Korea, ready to go to work on the site. And just a few little clips of what to expect when we move to Korea. I haven't actually been there, but the missus has sent me loads of videos and photos back. So here's a little snippet of what we're up for.
All right, guys, thanks for watching. I just wanted to give that update before the computer gets locked away, but watch out for more videos. I will be keeping the channel alive for those of you that are interested, and I'll also be putting out snake content as frequently as I possibly can. So stay tuned. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to share, like, and subscribe, and we'll see you for the next one in Korea.